tell us about your research and how it has changed since the spell. When I first came here, one of the things we did was try to figure out what the diversity of ants in Louisiana. Some simple question is, what's here? So from there, we started looking at the impact of hurricanes on ants, and one might not think that hurricanes have any impact on ants, but storm surge certainly does. And actually, we th I think my results from the hurricane work are really important in relation to the oil spill, or actually I refer to it as a drilling disaster. What we discovered was we knew in some areas that were impacted by, for example, Hurricane Katrina and Rita, and then later Gustav and I, we uh, had around 20, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more species of ants. And then after the storm surge came in and flooded the areas, if there were no trees, there were no ants uh, after the Hurricane Katrina in particular, and then after Hurricane uh, um, Rita. And then if there were trees, we had some of the native ants. But So then we followed the populations and turned out in many of the areas, and to this day, in some of the areas that were heavily flooded, there are only invasive species left. Um, in other areas where the ants are a little bit more accustomed to flooding or they were protected, and that includes some of the coastal areas, we do have native species. And so we were just starting to try to figure out what was going on with those native species. And I had a student come from China in last summer, about a year ago, and he decided that this, these ideas that I was working on, that he was very interested. So he went in last year in the fall and intensively studied some of the areas of coastal Louisiana, in fact, from Cameron Parish all the way um, to, you know, past well, uh, the western, eastern part of Lake, Lake Pontchartrain. Um, and so he had become particularly interested in the marsh and then so he was going to formulate his research on what was happening in the marshes and then Deepwater Horizon happened. And fortunately, I've had former students who are in a lot of different places, and I had a student who was out on a boat the day after it happened, and they let me know that this was probably going to be a big deal. And so we, Schwan, my student, we sent him out to intensively sample so we would have a picture of what was happening before oil landfall. And, um, and so that's what we've we've been doing is asking questions. Uh, really our question, we're, uh, as a scientist, um, I'm going to take everyone back to sixth grade, we test hypotheses. So we go into the literature and we look at what's been done and we go and observe in nature and we form hypotheses or look at some, take somebody's hypotheses that they've done something with elsewhere and say, hey, does that hypothesis apply? hypothesis apply to this ecosystem. And so we were asking some questions about the food web um, in the coastal marshes and we're, um, I have two different projects. One looks at the total food web with some cooperators um, in the coastal marshes and then we're also, we have another, and my role in that, that first project is the, um, all, the pretty much any arthropod that we could catch. Um, so meaning spiders or insects, um, so it's dragonflies and crickets and bees and flies and also these little seed bugs that are green and very interesting and very, very, very numerous. Um, and then we're also interested in the ants in the marsh ecosystem. And then we have a separate project where we have a transect that runs from Peninsular Florida all the way to Texas. And it's looking at the, mar uh, the ants in the coastal environments, particularly the beaches and the coastal dunes. So we're asking the question is, what effect do the stressors, so the oil, the dispersant, dispersed oil, and human cleanup activities have on the coastal food web? My area is, of course, the insects don't live, you know, out in the water. So we're right on the, where the water meets the land and that marsh ecosystem or the sand, sandy dune ecosystem. And then I have cooperators in this very large project that we have. Some people are looking at the plants, some people are looking at the dinoflagellates, there are these microscopic organisms that um, apparently 
are very good indicators of um, stressors. And then I have a colleague that's looking at oysters, mussels, and snails. People often think, well, who cares about the bugs? You know, and they, and they have every right to first think that until I get a hold of them. Well, what happens is, and, the, and your fishermen that are out there will tell you, these bugs that they're, you know, swatting at when they're out fishing, they're not usually cussing them unless they're biting them a lot. But the fish that you see out there jumping, you know, in the quiet little bayou that you might be punting down or something like that, those fish are catching insects. So they're, the insects are, as I tell people, they're food, food for fish, frogs, and birds. And a lot of other vertebrates that might be out there. And then the birds that aren't actually eating the insects might be eating the frogs. And so, like, we can build a, a food web with the insects integrated very, very deeply in that. And they're often called the basis of the food web, but it turns out in some areas, um, depending on what, like, you know, what your scale is, they're actually integrated in a lot of different parts of the food web. So some of them are consuming the plants, and then there's some, you know, insects that, well, and spiders are consuming other insects, and so they're predators, and, and then, of course, they're being eaten by something else, you know, the birds. I mean, there's tons of, I mean, the bird watchers are, South Louisiana is a hotbed for bird watchers. We have migratory species, we have species that are here all year round, and um, if the birds aren't there, then the people aren't going to be there, and if the insects aren't there, the fish are not going to be there, and the people in South Louisiana lose their livelihood. And I'm very concerned that if they lose their livelihood, we're going to lose a huge area of culture in Louisiana. So the insects are really important.